Let's get all of these leaves colored. The little ones go quickly, but the big ones require more colors and more layers. So come color along and see how these came together. I begin with the little leaves since they will go really fast. I put down a light layer of dark green over the whole leaf with extra layers at the bottom. Hi everyone, welcome back to this color along. I'm Catherine, the artist behind Bigelow Fine Arts. This first part is in real time and this is how fast I'm moving. This is a free downloadable from Joanna Bassford's blog that I have linked to below, but it is also in her Worlds of Wonder adult coloring book if you just want to get the book, which is also linked below, or if you already have it. I'm zoomed in as much as I can, so hopefully everything is clear and easy to follow. I have the palettes listed for free on Patreon or Coffee, whichever works best for you, and they are also listed on screen as always. I add in apple green to the little curl over since I want that to be lighter. This is the only place I am using the apple green for these leaves. Finally, I blend the whole leaf with canary yellow, and it is that easy. Now, time to work up the rest of the little leaves. I come back in with dark green and add in a light layer over the whole leaf with extra layers at the bottom. I almost want to completely fill in the bottom so it will stay dark when I go over it with yellow. There are two little leaf curls, so I hit those up with apple green. Finally, I go through with canary yellow and I blend the whole leaf to really get the color blended and smooth. And those are the tiny leaves. Time to move on to the bigger leaves, which will require more colors and more layers. On to the big leaves and I come in with Spanish orange first and add in some color over the dotted internal lines. I just make sure to cover both sides of the line. Doesn't matter too much how far out to extend it, but I did leave some gaps between each set. This first leaf is really about establishing the color and how I want to place it on the leaf. Once I have a final leaf, the next leaves go much faster. I use goldenrod on the dotted vein lines, adding in a darker color there. I am aiming for yellowing fall leaves, where the leaf is yellowing but parts of it are still green.
As such, I come in with apple green and add in some color along the veins because sometimes that is all the green that remains on yellow fall leaves. I keep all of my layers light right now so I can gradually build up the color and it is a little easier to blend in a mistake if I don't like how a certain color looks. With canary yellow, I go through and fill in the whole leaf. This will also fill in the white spaces that I didn't fill on the first pass. I blend in more apple green along the veins, but I also add in patches on some areas of the leaf to give it a mottled look, like it is still changing color. I add in a touch of dark green to some of the veins, only in a couple of places to play up that color changing effect. I blend in goldenrod on one side of the leaf, focusing on getting the color right down beside the veins and the central rib. I do the same on the other side with Spanish Orange. This is setting up the leaf to have a darker side as if cast in shadow and a lighter side. And to keep that contrast, I blend in canary yellow with a heavy hand on the darker side of the leaf, and white, also with a heavy hand, on the lighter side of the leaf. And that is one leaf. Now I have a bunch more, so I'm going to speed through them, starting with Spanish Orange over the rib lines. If this is your first time here, welcome! This is the second video for this bird, but I worked up the other birds on this page if you want more color alongs. I have the playlist linked above in the cards, but feel free to jump in right here. Each video works alone. If you liked what you saw, make sure to hit that subscribe button to catch the next part of this color along.
I add in goldenrod close to the rib and vein lines. I go through with dark brown and block in all of the shadows either from other leaves overhanging or from the wild plums overhanging some leaves. For the veins, I add an apple green to all the interior dotted lines. I also go through and add in some random green patches to some of the leaves wherever they strike my fancy. I darken up some of the veins and ribs with dark green, again aiming for something random. With Spanish orange, I go through and lightly fill in all of the leaves to make sure I am filling in the white gaps I left earlier. I blend in one side of each leaf with canary yellow, using a heavy hand. I blend in the other side with white and also use a heavy hand. So now I am in the refining phase. I want to go through and make sure all of the colors are good and I have them blended in really well, meaning I want smooth gradients as well. So I go through with goldenrod and Spanish orange and touch up along the vein lines to make sure they are well covered. I go through and add to the green patches with more apple green and also touching up any veins that need a little more green to help them stand out. The leaves should all look different from each other, so don't try to make them all match. Embrace your natural variation. I blend the light side with white, mostly on the larger main leaves. I come back in with goldenrod and add more color to the darker side so I can build up a little contrast between the two sides. I add in a little more Spanish orange to refine the color. I add to the shadows so I can increase the contrast, helping them pop up just a little more. Then I give another blend with white on the light sides of the leaves, and this is the leaves. So, background time, and remember, backgrounds are totally optional, but on a printable, now is the perfect time to work on one where the stakes are low and the area to cover is small. I come in with light cerulean blue and put down a light layer over the whole background. I 
I come in with white and I add in some white spots that I want to leave light for later. And I promptly forgot where I put them since I couldn't see them very well against the blue. So add in your circles and add more cerulean blue around the outside so you can find them easier later. So here, when I come back in with the light cerulean blue, I was searching for my white spots to darken around them. Once I felt I found them all, I added another layer to the sky to darken the whole thing a little more. I'd also suggest not lining up your dots like I did. They look a little odd, all stacked in a straight line. With the indigo blue, I go through and add in some darker spots randomly around the page. I add in some cerulean blue around some of the darker spots to feather out the edges and create a nice blurry gradient of color. I only did a few because I realized I wanted to add in some canary yellow spots of color as well as some dark green before I cover up any areas with more blue. Now I can go through with more light cerulean blue and continue blending out the edges of the darker blue spots as well as adding in another layer to the whole background except where I placed yellow or green or white. Since each layer of one color darkens that color, I need to go through and darken up other colors at the same time to keep the same level of contrast. So I go through with more indigo blue, dark green, and canary yellow and darken up all of the spots I placed around the page. I add in another layer of light cerulean. I am still using a light hand with my pressure. I put the cerulean over everything blue. I blend out the white spots with some white, making sure I blend into the blue surrounding them just a little to help blur the edges. I add more layers to the dark green shapes as well as all the places with indigo blue. And finally, with a heavy hand, I blend out all of the light blue with light cerulean. I blend into the edges of the indigo blue areas, but I don't go over them too far as I don't want to lighten them up and lose my contrast.
I go through with each color and blend them in with a heavy hand as well, so more white, more indigo blue, and more yellow. I give the edges a little erase to tidy them up, and that is the soft blurry background. Thanks for coloring along with me on the leaves and background today. Let me know below or on social media if you colored along and how your coloring went. I'd love to know how your background turned out. I want to thank you all so much for coming along and joining in with me. If you found this useful, please like and share so others can find this video. If you liked how this background came together, I have another background where I worked up a bouquet similar to this with different colors. Check it out here. Until next time, happy coloring.